Hey, my friends, Jeff Yaldon here again. What does it mean to live fully in the present moment? It means that your awareness is completely centered on the here and the now. It means that you're not worrying about the future or thinking about the past. You see, when you live in the present, you are living where life is happening. The past and future are illusions. They don't exist. As the saying goes, tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow is only a concept. Tomorrow is always waiting to come around the corner. But around the corner are shadows never to have light shed upon because time is always now. As Buddha says, the secret of health for both mind and body is not to mourn for the past or worry about the future, but to live in the present moment wisely and earnestly. Why will learning to live in the present change your life? Well, if you're not living in the present, you're living in illusion. It seems like a pretty good reason to live in the present, doesn't it? But how often are we worrying about things that have yet to come? Or how often do we beat ourselves up for mistakes that we've made in the past, no matter how big or small or how time has passed? The answer is too much. Not only will living in the present have a dramatic effect on your emotional well-being, but it can also impact your physical health as well. It's long been known that the amount of mental stress you carry can have a detrimental impact on your health. So if you're living in the present, you're living in acceptance. You're accepting life as it is now, not as how you wish it would have been. When you're living in acceptance, you realize that everything is complete as it is. You can forgive yourself for the mistakes you've made, and you can have peace in your heart knowing that everything that should happen will happen. If you worry about what might be and wonder what might have been, you will ignore what is. So start living and stop conceptualizing. The worst part about living in the past or the future is that you're giving up on your personal power. I get it. But if you're not living now, you're giving up on your life. You're surrendering your power to create. If there are changes you'd like to make in life, it's best to do it now. And if you're living in the past, you can't do anything about it. It's gone. If you're worrying about the future, you're living somewhere that doesn't exist. It hasn't happened yet. If you want to change your life, the only place you can do it is in the present. But first you need to accept life as it is. When it comes down to it, your mind is the only thing keeping you from living in the present. Mr. Robert Nathan says, there's no distance on this earth as far away as yesterday. So why is it difficult to live in the present? There are many people that can give you their opinion Many people give you their advice on why it is difficult to live in the present. Some will say it's because we live in abstraction. We live in a world of symbols. Some might say it's because we have awareness of the passage of time or the illusion of time. It produces anxiety because we can look at the past and we can also predict the future. I think all these answers are partially true. Though the biggest reason that we don't live in the present is because we don't shut up. What do I mean by that? We're constantly talking to ourselves. As Alan Watts aptly put it, if we are talking all the time, we never hear what anyone else has to say. In the same way, if we are talking to ourselves all the time, we are never listening. We have nothing to think about other than the thoughts, and the thoughts are never in relationship with reality. As humans, we love to create stories. We love to listen to other people's stories and compare them with our own. This is beautiful. In a way, we could say that the entire universe is based on one collection of stories, a cosmic story. But the problem is when we feel the need to create a story about everything, we're living entirely in a world of symbols. We confuse the world as it is with the way we think about it, talk about it, and the way we describe it. Reality, though, is not a concept. When we realize this, we are able to return to a state of peace and stillness. 
So here's a new way, five ways to start living in the present. But in order for us to live in the present, does this mean we have to give up our innate desire to write our personal story and share it with others? No. We shouldn't trade one extreme for another. What we really want is to find balance. And if you follow these simple tips, you can start living in the present and you can start experiencing reality as it is. So number one, don't try to quiet your mind. Hardest thing to do in living in the moment is, or, or trying to simply witness life, is to not have the urge to try to quiet your mind. When we try to quiet the mind, we just disturb it more. Instead, simply witness your thoughts as if they are pure sound. Don't try to judge your thoughts. There are no good thoughts or bad thoughts. Simply witness them as if they were just noise. Number two, you are not your thoughts. Too often we identify ourselves with our thoughts. We actually believe we are the dialogue inside our mind. However, we are much more than just our thoughts. We are the force that moves through our mind, our spirit, and our body. Knowing this helps us overcome our fear of quietness and silence. We can have peace knowing that when our minds are quiet, we are not losing touch with ourselves. Number three, breathe. You are alive. For a moment, I'd like you to stop reading and simply pay attention to your breath. I'll wait. As you focus your attention on your breath, you'll notice that your breath is neither voluntary or involuntary. It is something you do, but at the same time, it's something that does you. When you focus your attention on your breath, you come back into relationship with reality. Because like breath, reality is both something you do and something that does you. It's co-creative. Practice conscious breathing to bring your mind back to the present. Number four, music for meditation. I like music. There's a lot of great music made to assist with meditation. One of my personal favorites, though, is a gentleman by the name of Stan Richardson, Japanese flute music. I play this on my smartphone while I'm in the office. I also play it sometimes while I'm traveling. I probably should play it more. Every time I play it, I can feel its peaceful energy wash over me. Music for meditation can help us bring our attention back to the present and clear our mind. Number five, practice mindfulness. Practice. This isn't so much of a tip as it is a staple in living in the present. Practicing mindfulness means that we practice our awareness in all of our actions, whether we're washing dishes or tying our shoes. Our mind is focused on what we are doing or who we are with. We're not thinking about the bills that we have to pay or the phone call we need to make. We're simply living in the moment. We're living in the here and the now. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you share it with others. I'm Jeff Yalden, mental health and youth motivational speaker. God bless you, and God bless America.